And uh, so he didn't share the excitement as I did, I'm sure. But uh, when we look at these occurrences that are as regular as birth, I think Brother Jerry had a new grandchild. Was it the same day that Brother Chris died? Birth, death, a part of the normal pattern of life. And we will never get out of this cycle on this side of eternity. And sometimes I admit, I just get tired of it. Sometimes I feel angry. What the devil, what the enemy did there through the fall of man. All the hurts, all the tears, all the violence. We just look at Brother Chris's life, the family's experience. A lot of hurts, a lot of disappointments, tragedies. And you I think it's good to take the time and as we look at the grave and we face the reality of what sin did and does. Sin brings death. That's why we're here today. We are committing the body of a dear brother because of sin entering into the world. That's a dark reality that we can never get away from. But at the same time then, as we look at the life of Brother Christ, we see in spite of the tragedies, the triumph of our Lord Jesus present in his life and in his family. So this, as we face the grave, as we face this inevitable occurrence, unless the Lord Jesus comes before we die, which is good to face these realities. We're all going to die. Life is brief. Even at his age, life is still but a shadow. A flower in the field that is here today, gone tomorrow. And that at the end of the road, we will all meet God. But also the other reality is the wonderful, wonderful assurance we have that our Lord Jesus has prepared a place for us, is preparing a place for us, and has paid the cost, the penalty for our sins. For those of us who love him, who have committed our lives to him, he lives in our hearts. That is reality. Just as real as death is. The problem is we can't see it with our physical eyes, right? This is all is temporal. And we are looking through the eyes of faith to that which is eternal, which will never pass away. of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus. And it's a kingdom that will never pass away. So in the midst of all that we face, and you know that as a family, but just an encouragement, what we face is temporal. But as we sang these songs of victory, we believe, we know, that that which is eternal is permanent. And 
will not be taken away from us. So may that be your comfort today. It's wonderful news, and I think we as Christians, every time we gather together for memorial service, it's a wonderful privilege and it's a responsibility to clearly proclaim the good news. Christ Jesus came into the world, said the Apostle Paul, to bring salvation of whom I am chief. Paul in Philippians 3 verse 20 says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which, now notice some of these adverbs, now it's for our citizenship is in heaven. So do we always, do we ever think of that we really don't belong here? From which we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies that it may be conformed to his glorious body. Is that an exciting future? I say it is. So we can hang on to that, which what we see today, what we experience today is temporal. But what we look for is eternal. And remember the seed of the woman has crushed the head of the serpent. That is good news. And as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, so when this corruptible, this which decays, has put on incorruption, and this mortal, that which dies, has put on immortality, that which cannot die, then shall be brought to you past the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Our Lord Jesus overcame that. And finally, the Lord, our Lord's proclamation himself when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whoever lives, and note these words, let's just say whoever believes, whoever lives and believes in me, never die. Chris has not died. He hasn't died. He's just transferred places. That's all that happened. So his soul, his spirit, has gone to God who gave it the first place. His body, going back to the dirt, to the ground, waiting for his again on this earth. The void will never be filled. We can just encourage each other. There's coming a day when all that will be changed. And Jesus, he finished his proclamation by saying, by asking Martha, he said, do you believe this? So I asked that today. Do you believe this? You don't believe it. These opportune times to say, Lord, take it to heart. Because these are eternal questions that make all the difference in the spin eternity. We'll cut to the uh, formal commitment of the body. For as much as it has pleased, Almighty God, in his wise to take out of this world the soul of our brother Christ. We commit the body to the ground, earth to earth, dust to dust, and commit the soul to God who gave it. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and sea 
shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed, and be like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Our Father who art in heaven, our hearts overflow with thankfulness of the provisions you have made for us through your Son, our Lord Jesus, that we can be redeemed from this evil world, that we can have the hope of being with you eternally, but not only that, but we can have the assurance that you live in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given us our dear brother Chris to befriend us to to strengthen us to encourage us and we just are so grateful for his life and testimony and for the life and testimony of the whole family would you bless them in a rare real way at this time of grieving the loss their dad, their grandfather, and Lord, would you stand by their side in the days ahead? Shall we pray the Lord's prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. I forgot something important I wanted to say. Impact of Chris and his friendship especially meant a lot during our time together at for hands of Christ. Many a joyful hour spent in his pickup and his whole need trailer. And I just also want to tell the fact I talked to Emilio Elliott, a Native American friend who lives back in California. He and Chris they spent a lot of time mowing lawns together. Even when in his last summer, I believe, you know, sometimes quite a bit of grass got on some cars, but that was all right. Even one time into the mail truck, I think. So <laughs> it, it was all fine. And uh, I just rejoice. In, if I think of the life of Chris, I think of service. That's the way he shared his family. All right, we're done here, and uh, so you're all welcome to come back to the church for to share in the meal there. <laughs>